and uh, welcome to a special circumstances and BFE Labs joint video project. Uh, today we're going to be talking about tomahawks. We have two examples here. Uh, one is from Boker. This is the uh, Boker Vox T-Hawk designed by a Danish knife maker. Um, Daniel Boxness? Yeah, I believe the Boxness. Yeah. Um, I think this is one of the first tomahawk, tomahawk offerings that Boker has actually done. This particular one is made from SK5 carbon steel and is, I believe, forged for the most part. It definitely appears to be forged. Yeah. The, the bevel, but... And the other one we have is the uh, SOG Voodoo Hawk. A uh, little more of a sort of a not an integral design like the Boker is, but 420HC head and uh, a nice fiber reinforced nylon handle. It's pretty sturdy feeling. Um, there is a significant difference in price on these. The uh, SOG roughly goes for about oh, 40 some dollars and these are about 80 some. Uh, still a very good price on both of them, honestly. Compared to other commercial offerings, even production offerings, they're over $200. Especially, yeah, yeah. exactly. So we have a couple of differences as far as the, uh, the various construction methods or the grinds go. Uh, this is a, the Boker is a mild a hollow grind, fairly flat, fairly easy to convex. And that's something Morgan here, who's done a lot more work with tomahawks than I have, uh, is going to talk a little bit more about. One of the things that actually comparing these two hawks I do like is that this already is, has that convex shape to the way the bevel is shaped on the head. Given that on this hawk the bevel actually begins way back up here at what would be the eye in a conventional axe where the handle meets the head it actually has a slight convex taper all the way down. I've been using axes all my life and actually depending on them all my life. And one of the things I've found is that this convex structure is much stronger. It's much more dependable. Um, various hollow ground axes and even to some extent just completely flat ground axes are more likely to chip and more likely to suffer serious damage if you encounter hard materials such as nails, bolts, rocks, depending on what you're actually chopping. If you're chopping in a, a woodscraft scenario, you're probably going to encounter rocks rather than nails or bolts. If you're using the, your axe as a breaching or a rescue tool, you may very well be encountering bits of metal. And that stronger structure is probably going to help a great deal. Now, I will say, I don't think this is a weak axe, looking at it. That very slight hollow grind is very, very slight. It's actually barely noticeable. It's very, it's very close to being a flat grind. And the overall structure almost lends itself already to being convex fairly easily. So if you want to do a little work on the edge, that'd be fairly easy to do. Um, we do also have a couple of differences as far as just materials other than the steels. Um, the Boker uses G10 handles. Uh, these are screwed in. The screws are not recessed, which I honestly would have liked to have seen just for completeness and kind of a properly finished product. Uh, they don't really seem to bother my hand already, so I'm not too worried about it. We'll see how it actually fares with, with some fairly heavy use here shortly. Uh, it does also come with two different colors of paracord uh, to wrap the handle with, and it's meant to go over the scales, so you could really build up the handle quite nicely with the paracord. I haven't done that yet. I'm just going to run it raw like this, and we'll see how it fares. Um, I'm not honestly a big fan of paracord handles. No. Um, I'd rather have you know, a bulkier handle just by scale material or something like that. One of the problems with paracord handles, particularly if you're in such, like a rescue environment or something, is these are going to be getting knocked around and dragged around and paracord being essentially fabric or Nylon. fiber yeah. is going to get torn and you start getting little tufts and eventually you're going to tear through and as soon as you tear through your entire handle wrapping can come undone. Or it might melt if, you, it can I mean, melt if you're using heat. it in a military capacity and you yeah. flash damage. Yeah, that'll melt. <laughs> No. Um, that might actually be true. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like to but see something. it won't something, melt the same way. It won't melt the same way, and it's, I mean, it's a solid material. Yeah. So it's going to be relatively temperature resistant. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you actually expose it to flame, yeah, you yeah. have an issue. Yeah. Uh, but so with the G10, at least a standard G10 would also have an issue. You can get scales that are made out of what's called G10 FR4, uh, which is also the densest type of um, 
of G10 out there. Also adds significant expense and it is more expensive. Really it. it is more. Well, I use it. Well, custom, yes. Oh, damn. Custom makers use it. I use it. Huh? Okay. Um, the FR4 is significantly more temperature resistant and it does not uh, catch flame until very high temperatures and sustained exposure. Um, but like we were just talking about, it does add some expense and really, as far as I know at least, no no production companies use it at all. Yeah, and you know, you're know, you actually one of the few custom makers I know who uses it often. Yeah, So it's just, why not? <laughs> it's kind of my take on it, but you know, that's, that's again custom stuff, so. Um, spikes. So we have two very different spikes here on the, uh, the Vox Hawk and the Voodoo Hawk. This is obviously more of a traditional thing, that a spike type that you might more associate with a traditional type tomahawk. Uh, pretty pointy, but it's not overly sharp. You could definitely do some damage with it though. We're gonna see, we're actually talking about hard materials. We're gonna take care of this old Subaru here in a little bit. Um, obviously also a big difference in the length of the spike. The, the Vox Hawk really has a, a very short spike. Uh, fairly blunt, but it does have some beveling to to the actual tip of it, so it, it should do a, a fairly decent job, I think. I really actually You're like the way... You get as much penetration. I really like the way it is ground, given that it's full thickness here, and the beveling is actually up here on the top. Yeah. The way when you swing, your arm moves in an arc, it's still got enough point to create an entry point, but it's hitting with a very strong part of the point. Oh yeah. And that's a fairly unconventional way to grind the point on a tomahawk, but I think it's actually probably, I won't say maybe a better way, but it's definitely going to be a fairly strong way, or I'm anticipating it will be a strong way. I, I would predict that. We will find out. We're going to find I out. I could be wrong. I might be wrong. Mea culpa. It happened culpa. once. Uh, so, you know, obviously two pretty different hawks, but they're both very much geared for the tactical market. Of course, this one was in... Uh, what was it Medal of Honor for or something? Modern Warfighter, some crap. Sure. Yeah, it's been marketed with that. I, I think that's kind of funny, but it's not why I bought it. I bought it because it's a surprisingly decent looking hawk for a really good price. So we'll see how it actually performs. Uh, carbon steel, at least my estimation, the SK-5 should perform better than the uh, 420. I would anticipate that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how we'll it actually see. holds I've, up. I am not a fan of 420 in most cutlery, but I've never used it in a tool like this. It may yeah. be better suited for a tool like this that is fairly robust and is not so dependent on really fine edge holding ability. And SOG generally does a fairly decent job with their heat treats. Usually they do, yeah. You know, um, same thing with Boker, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how they hold up when we uh, start whacking on the Subaru here. Oh, and uh, Lubman, Subaru, just saying. You'll know what I'm talking about. One quick thing. Uh, actually, wait, I can jump back in on this editing. Let's see real quick. Talking about construction differences, you'll see on the Boker that this steel tang runs the full length of the handle and is actually covered by scales the way a knife handle would be. Oh, it's an integral it's hawk. It's a full yeah. integral hawk. The difference here is although this has a tang that runs down to the handle, that tang on this SOG stops right here. Now that is held in place by dual bolts and then of course by this metal sleeve. So it should be fairly strong. I don't really anticipate there's going to be any weakness in this structure at all. Oh, I'd be pretty impressed it does if you break change that the balance of the hawk a little bit. The boker has a much more rearward weight. There's more weight down here in the handle. That might slow it down in movement a little bit. Um, this is going to really pull into what you're chopping or what you're striking because of that forward weight. Uh, I will add though that unlike some other hawks with synthetic handles on the market, SOG actually added a fairly substantial counterweight at the end, and this is a steel counterweight that's bolted onto the handle. Yeah. Um, so we'll that see how that... also is going to serve as somewhat of a hand stop. Serves as a hand stop. Slipping down, because these aren't terribly aggressive. They're enough to add some traction, but that's a really nice stop. And with the Boker, you actually have the integral tang itself providing a, um, a stop here. And you do also have on the Boker, you have an, an, an additional strike point with the... Uh, mm -hmm with the tip here of the, of the pommel. Yeah. I, I mean, well, obviously you could, you you could, could whack somebody in the head, but this is One of the things I like about spike. this, though, is this actually gives you a point for secondary striking against oh, yeah. this tool. Yeah. If you have this wedged into something and you need to strike against it to 
create leverage or deliver additional power to try and pop something open. Rather than chewing up your handle here by whacking it with a sledge, you can whack this. Yep, that's, that's a good point. So uh, we're going to cut away here and uh, we'll see what we can do on the uh, One quick Subaru. note. Um, you'll notice I'm not wearing safety gear and I'm not going to be while we're whacking on the Subaru. I'm stupid and I forgot it. Don't do this at home. Well, I'm also, wearing safety gear. I'm a professional. You probably aren't. Hey, hey, I have a tomahawk. What? Hey, uh, I have a tomahawk. Yeah, okay. Let's cut, huh? <laughs> what? I can't be belligerent in your video. Alright, so, uh, had some technical difficulties there and uh, kind of got carried away a little bit and had started on the other, the other side of the, the Subaru here. So, to recap real quick, this thing is apparently covered in about an eighth of an inch of battleship paint. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's pretty damn durable, but we're going to start with the glass, just see how the spikes do on the glass. And as we found out on the other side, really no issues when you don't hit it like a bitch. <clears throat> so, design of the Boker actually lends itself fairly readily for this with the exposed neck that you have up here. So, clearing glass. fairly straightforward and I even used the edge before to do it and uh, got some pretty good dings in it but uh, no bad chip outs really expected damage of course the coating also takes a beating again expect damage so we gonna try the like we did before we're gonna try the spike nice. right, get through here get a bit caught caught a little bit, but let's see if I can get it out. There we go. Alright, got through pretty well. Apparently the paint's not a stick on this side here. Interestingly enough. So we're gonna see if we can open up the bodywork here. The uh wide head gives you some fairly good purchase for wrenching it out of stuff. It's holding up pretty good. It's not too bad. Uh, body work here is pretty tough. Open this thing like a tin can. So, holding up pretty good. Uh, gloves I'm wearing is a pair of Outdoor Research Argonauts that I've had for a few years. They've been through the wars. Pretty thin glove, not a thick work glove at all. And it's uh, holding up pretty well. It's not too uncomfortable. I would probably like to see the edges of the scales uh, rounded off a little more, but that's easy enough to do. So, let's see what the uh, Voodoo Hawk can do. So, just like the uh, Boker, not really expecting the uh, spike to be having an, to have any issues with the glass. And you don't hit it flat on. That's why you wear gloves, kids. No shit. Again, with the exposed steel on the on the neck there. We actually have a fairly good clearing tool as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. The uh, There's a little bit of damage showing on the fiber handle, but not too much. The point took a little bit of a, a flattening from the impact of the glass, and there's some scuffs on the paint, but nothing I expected. I really like these heavy notches. They're cut both the base of the spike and the base of the uh, head. Good for clearing because stuff. It gives you a really good grip on getting a hold of the stuff and really ripping it out. Yeah. yeah. Try the spike on the bodywork. So, pretty immediately here, we're definitely seeing the benefit of penetration with the longer spike on the uh, on the SOG. Yeah. Also seeing that 
because it has a much smoother design, it doesn't have any real catch points, it comes free much easier. Yeah, definitely. You wanna go ahead and try the, the edge? Uh, sure, we can do that. Go ahead. Gotta say, that's pretty decent. Yeah, that chewed up some. The glass does a number on it. Yeah. Glass def definitely does a number definitely on the, it. Definitely uh, the, because this is a much finer edge too than the uh, boker. Yeah, it is thinner, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely thinner. We've got a so, pretty good rounding right there on that top corner. I see that. So, you know, something to note here is the glass definitely does a, a real number on the edge of any tool that you're going to be using on it. That's why you have points. That's why you have points. The fucking thing cuts steel like it is. It goes through pretty well. I almost want to say, as far as this kind of work goes, They do work. Now that takes care of the lock. There you go. Well, we do have some uh, accretion of paint on these. It's pretty much to be expected. There you go. Well, you hit it like a man. I will note, after doing all of that chopping fairly steadily and furiously, that tomahawk stayed exactly where I wanted it to in my hand. My hand didn't slip up and down, and I also don't have any real hot spots or wear spots on my hand that might turn to blisters. Part of the reason I did that without a glove was to actually see how my hand would feel after doing something like that. Fairly comfortable handle over any kind of real chopping. Well, I guess we can do the same test with the boker, huh? So, we'll see. I'll just try to open up a line pretty much across here. Go for it. Boker does seem to get stuck a little more. Yeah. That could be the shape, could be the finish. It's the flatness. This has a fairly constant paper. Yeah, it definitely binds more in this kind of material. as you'll see in the pictures, has a couple of lines here. And they're actually recesses into the metal. Grooves, basically. Some here, some here on the front, on the spike as well. Those honestly tend to catch. I'm finding that they actually tend to hang up on the metal some when I go all the way through. And uh, that may be... Maybe a design flaw. Uh, at least for this kind of work. I honest, I mean, for any kind of woodscraft, I, I don't see them being an no, issue at all. They're not get in the way. So, if you're doing a lot of vehicle extrications with tomahawk, <laughs> uh, it might be an issue. Any, uh, anything where you're getting a full depth of penetration with yeah. the tool from the very front of the edge back up towards the handle, you might see some, some catching. And yeah. other than that, you won't. But with the, uh, I mean, if you're doing it in wood. You're never gonna get that far in. You, well, even if you did, it'd be splitting it. Mm -hmm. So you'd never be touching those with. Yeah. So basically this is only really gonna be an issue with doing stuff like this. Yeah. And like I said, I honestly don't even know if these are designed for that, but you know. Uh, it is holding up really well. And 
despite the edges of the scales being kind of well, a little sharper than I'd like, um, really no real hot spots, pretty much stayed in my hand where I wanted it to. Uh, the screws, despite not being recessed, have proven to be a non-issue, honestly. I've not been noticing them at all. No. I mean, they're my hand honestly mostly misses them. It sits right between them. Nice. So, I'm honestly not seeing that being an issue. It's more comfortable than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no hot spots. No, it feels pretty good, so that's pretty good. Tougher than it looks. Stuff is tougher than it looks. It's thick. Yeah, I'm glad I'm wearing protection here. There you go, I think you're starting to get some penetration there. <laughs> Alright, so, we're going to try here with the SOG. I'm not going to start quite as high, mostly because I want to use the uh, that point, that forward leading edge, to break through. Binds up a little bit in this stuff. Uh, that could be the coating. Could be some of the uh, sort of lines they've got, the grooves they got milled in here. That might let it bind up a little bit. It is making some decent headway though. Again, I kind of think that the uh, thinner profile is going to be working better. Be working better, yeah. And of course, the spike goes a lot deeper. Does bind up a little bit. Oh yeah, that spike really yeah. does a number. Try the boker real quick. You can also start with the leading edge on the boker. Got a lot of debris here, but You ever have to use an axe that hard? Whew. You better pray it's as strong as the poker is. It might not be the best profile, but this thing is... It's tough. It's tough, and so is that little sog. Yeah, yeah, I like this. So, other than the helmet test, which is going to be upcoming here at the end, that's all we got. Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, Boker, Box T Hawk, and the Sog Voodoo Hawk. Uh, hell, I'd be happy with either one, honestly, depending on my use. Yeah. You know, the Sog Hawk is a little more compact. 
Yeah. And uh, better suited for the breaching extrication stuff, I think. But for an overall woodscraft tomahawk, a boker, yeah. I think that'll do nicely. Yeah, I think it will. You know. So, different tools, honestly, for slightly different purposes, I'd say. I would um, agree. Both quite good. I'm, yeah, I'm they've, very they've held up really, really well. I mean, very we're, impressed. We're both whaling away as pretty much as hard as we can, and uh, yeah, yeah, wow, they've held up great. Yep, for the money, there, that's unbeatable. I mean, yeah, we'll see if we can't get our hands one day on a uh, CRKT uh, RMJ. Be nice, RMJ tactical design hawks. It's, RMJ is one of the one of the big names in the uh, tactical tomahawk one of market. Leading producers, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see what we can come up with. But uh, that's all we got, folks. Stay tuned for the uh, helmet test, which might not honestly be a separate video entirely. It might, yeah. But uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, thanks for watching. No, this is kind of long, but you know, thanks for sticking out with us and putting up with the humor. <laughs>